On behalf of Father Minor and Deacon Frank and all of our parish staff, I want to first wish all of you a most blessed and a grace-filled Easter that all of us may experience in the depth of our heart a power and a joy that comes from this reality of Christ, the Son of God, who suffered and died on the cross, but is now risen in glory to offer us eternal life in Him. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. These words from Psalm 118 we sang, and it's to remind us that this day that the psalmist writes about it's the day of the Lord, the day of his resurrection. And it's the day you and I are meant to live each day as we are on this journey home to him. We celebrate with great joy this incomparable event that this one who died on the cross and who was buried who did that to satisfy the debt of sin owed by each and every one of us and offer us the forgiveness of our sins, now bursts forth from the tomb. As we heard in our gospel, the tomb is empty. The Son of God is alive. And now he offers us this life to be shared with him now and then one day forever in that never-ending glory of heaven it's the culmination and the climax of all that has been planned from the beginning of time. God's promise of salvation to Adam and Eve after their first sin, the restoration of all that was lost that is now accomplished in Christ. The church, of course, celebrates this reality always, but especially over these last three days, what they call the Paschal Triduum as our Lenten journey of prayer and penance has come to an end. Thursday evening, we gathered for the Mass of the Lord's Supper, reflected upon that first Holy Thursday, the Last Supper, when our Lord instituted the sacraments of the Holy Priesthood and the Holy Eucharist. This greatest gift that God gave to us as he sacramentally anticipated his death and resurrection and now makes himself present through the person of the priest in this reality at every Mass. Friday we gathered, the one day we don't celebrate Mass in the year, to recount in silence and solemnity his passion and his death, this ultimate expression of the selfless love of the Son of God on the cross. And now you and I, this morning, come to the tomb with Mary Magdalene and John and Peter. And we too are meant to see that it is empty. We are told that they saw and believed how their lives had now been completely changed, dramatically transformed from that sadness, that tragedy and loss that overwhelmed them in the crucifixion, now to an immeasurable joy and hope and happiness that would sustain them always. And so it is to be with us. All of us come here amidst all the struggles and the sorrows and the difficulties of this life. We are burdened with so many doubts or fears and worries. And yet this event of the resurrection is meant to free us from all of that. The Son of God has joined our humanity to himself. He has taken it through the most horrific suffering and death. And now he shows us in his life what is meant for all of us. In our first reading from the Acts of the Apostle, we hear St. Peter, who only some time earlier had been filled with shame and guilt as a result of his sin, his denials. But now he boldly proclaims that everyone who believes in him will receive the forgiveness of sins through his name. It is this forgiveness of our sins that is the source of all our hope and our salvation. 
And St. Paul affirms this end that is meant for all of us. As we pray, we too one day will appear with him in glory. You and I each day are faced with countless issues and situations and trials and difficulties that are unavoidable in this life. How do we engage these issues? Do we engage them with a type of sadness and fear? Or do we engage them with hope and with trust in God? Where do we keep our focus? It's so easy to focus on the things of this world because they're visible to us. But St. Paul tells us in our second reading to seek what is above and to think of what is above. Do we do that? <laughs> or are we consumed with the things of this world? Do we live out our Catholic faith and embrace it each and every day of our lives? Do we come here each and every Sunday, which is a celebration of this Sunday, to be united to Christ in the Holy Eucharist, the most powerful way we can be united to him on this earth? Or maybe do we come here only occasionally? My dear brothers and sisters, if you and I are not connected to Christ, if we are not joined to him in the fullest way possible on earth, in this Holy Eucharist, in our personal commitment to Him, in our desire and in our daily prayer life to grow in our relationship with Him, then we will never know the peace that He wants to share with us. If we do not see that our communion here with the Lord is meant to begin every week of our lives, and is meant to be lived out in our communion with Him, then we'll never know the joy and hope he wants to give to us. Now in our liturgy on this Easter Sunday, we will have the opportunity to renew our baptismal promises. To recall that event when you and I became sons and daughters of God in baptism. Let us pause and listen and reflect upon the questions that will be asked to us and the answers that we are to give. Let us really renounce Satan and his works and his empty show. Let us say, I do, to those expressions of our faith, this belief that we publicly express and proclaim that we believe in his church, in the forgiveness of our sins, in the resurrection of the body, and in life everlasting. Let us pray that this faith may be increased in all of us. Then as we will be sprinkled with that blessed water, reminding us of our baptism, may it effect in us a new awakening and a new birth of the life meant for us. Let's reflect and recall that indescribable and overwhelming joy that was felt that first Easter by Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and all the others who saw that empty tomb. And may we who have come here this morning experience in the depth of our hearts that joy. May we then come here every Sunday with an ever-growing fervor as we encounter the risen Christ here in this Eucharist to receive him, to be united to him, and to be filled with his presence and his peace so that we might be sustained in our journey home to him, to then gaze upon him in his risen glory one day forever, we pray, in heaven. <laughs>